This event is produced by French Quarter Festivals Incorporated, a nonprofit organization showcasing New Orleans culture and heritage since 1984. This event is made possible by sponsorship of community-minded organizations and the sale of Abita, Jack Daniels, Sonoma Cotrell Wines, Corbell, Tequila Heredura, Finlandia, Pepsi, Aquafina, Bayou Rum, French Market Cold Brew, Louisiana Iced Tea, and Festival Merchandise, which helps pay for great entertainment, security, sanitation, recycling, EMS, and production costs. Please support your festival by purchasing from our beverage and merchandise booths. And do your part to keep the festival clean by using trash and recycling containers on site. And please enjoy responsibly. Special thanks to the Satchmo Legacy Stage contributors, Harris New Orleans, Joseph K. and Inez Eichenbaum Foundation, Ella Fitzgerald Charitable Foundation, the Fertel Foundation, Leslie Alley, Richie and Vicky Norigian, and Andrea DePlessis. And thank you to all our festival sponsors, including Chevron, Omni Royal Orleans, Abita Brewing Company, Brown Foreman, Fidelity Bank, GE Digital, WWL TV, Offbeat Magazine, NOLA.com, Times Picayune, and many more. Be sure to visit our outdoor stages, the Abita Beer Garden, and our festival food vendors. Pick up a schedule for a full listing of all events and stop by the merchandise tent to purchase the official Satchmo Summerfest poster, shirts, and souvenirs. Enjoy the 18th annual Satchmo Summerfest presented by Chevron. And happy birthday, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, happy birthday, Louis Armstrong. All right, uh, again, welcome to the Satchmo Legacy Stage. We've got three days of great information and lectures and talks and movies and things. Um, so we want you to you know, stick around and hang out here a lot. Um, my name is David Cunion. I'm the MC and I'm the music curator for the New Orleans Jazz Museum in which you are sitting. Thank you for coming to that too. Uh, right now, um, Catherine Russell is going to talk about the mutual admiration society between uh, Louis Armstrong and Billie Holiday. And I just want to say that Catherine, besides being a brilliant scholar, is also a world-class singer who makes fantastic <laughs> records. <laughs> so, you know... Anyway, take it away. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I have to follow that introduction. Thank you so much, everybody. And um, I just want to first uh, thank my father, Louis Russell, for his extensive archive. Um, this first photograph actually comes from that archive. He saved everything. And uh, thank you, Daddy. And I'd also like to thank my partner here, Paul Kahn, for his extensive research on this subject, which um, is sort of the basis of my presentation. And I also want to thank Ricky Ricard Ricardi and um, the Louis Armstrong Archive at Queens College. Um, so this photo was taken uh, somewhere in the week uh, between uh, April 3rd and April 9th, 1941, from the, uh, their engagement at the Lowe State Theater in Midtown Manhattan. And I love this photo because it really, it's, it's, it's so honest. You know, we know when Louis Armstrong was happy and when he wasn't from your uh, from Ricky's uh, wonderful clips of him. And he is truly enamored at this moment. And Billie Holiday is, you know, just looks a little bit shy. And, um, you know, this was really in the peak of her early uh, career, of like the middle of her early career. She was recording extensively and um, performing extensively. And this really does to me reflect the very honest mutual admiration between them but deeper still because I've had this feeling when I've shared the stage with famous people you know that that's a safe place for artists the stage nobody's gonna hurt you on the stage and you can just stop for a moment and enjoy the moment without all the stresses of life, everything else, you know, bogging you down, you can just enjoy that. So it looked like maybe there was applause at that moment and they, they could stop. That's when you can stop and say, ah, oh, everything I went through in life 
builds up to this moment right here. So um, I also feel that these two artists understood each other very deeply because they could honestly reveal a lyric like many others can't. I mean, they could take a song that other people couldn't sing and, and make it uh, personal to them. Uh, so the backstory uh, a little bit before 1941 is um, when Joe Glazer uh, connected with Louis Armstrong. Joe Glazer, who was Louis Armstrong's manager and booking agent from the time um, that he started managing in 1935, Louis Armstrong was his number one client for the rest of both of their lives. So they both uh, worked together for the rest of their lives. And soon after, uh, in 1935, when Louis Armstrong needed a band, came to New York, Joe Glazer put him together with Louis Russell's orchestra, and it became Louis Armstrong and his orchestra. Um, then Joe Glazer began managing basically African-American artists, and Billie Holiday was one of the first after Louis Armstrong that he took on. And um, the first engagement uh, that Joe Glazer booked for Louis Russell and his orchestra with Billie Holiday as a special guest was at a place called Connie's Inn, which was in uh, Midtown Manhattan, am I right? Okay, so that was a big deal in those days because uh, it was artists that primarily worked in Harlem at the Apollo Theater and at all the other venues up there coming to Midtown and working in Midtown. So it was worthy of um, a clip in the New York Times. Can I have the... And Paul is, Paul is going to help me here with the... Right. So that's the clip. The, the next slide that I'm going to show pertains to this, to this gig in 1941. And um, so actually, uh, backtracking a little bit, uh, Connie's Inn was in 1935, ending in 1936 because uh, artists did months-long engagements at theaters and clubs. And actually, Bessie, uh, uh, Billie Holiday's other idol was Bessie Smith. And uh, Billie Holiday got sick and could not finish the engagement at Connie's Inn, and who took over for her? Bessie Smith. Okay, so this reads, um, and this is from April 4th, 1941, the stage show which came to Low State Theater yesterday features Louis Satchelmouth Armstrong and his famous orchestra. Armstrong referred to as the International King of Swing by Jitterbug Society, performs on the trumpet, and introduces other members of his musical unit. On the program are Billie Holiday and Sonny Woods. Sonny Woods was a fabulous tenor who was with Louis Russell's orchestra and continued on uh, with Louis Armstrong. Um, and these shows had, you know, five to ten acts, and they did several shows a night, so several shows a day. So Big Time Crip, the one-legged tap dancer, was another uh, act on that bill and the two Zephyrs, which was a comic duo. Um, so after the Connie's Inn uh, engagement in 1936, Louis Armstrong and Billie Holiday went their separate ways. They traveled extensively. Billie Holiday was, was working with everybody from, from, from Teddy Wilson to Artie Shaw to Benny Carter to, I mean, the... the recording and traveling schedule was, was, was so extensive. And they made soundies in that time period. You know, I'm tired just thinking about the schedules that these folks, you know, so I don't, I don't complain when I'm working because that was work. That was actual work. Six shows a day, you know, uh, no accommodations. And you're traveling from place to place. You're recording all hours of the night in between engagements and so forth and so on. So, um, uh, but Joe Glazer really uh, saw how special Billie Holiday was and how 
much audiences loved her. So he wanted to also capitalize on that. So he not only contributed to her stardom, but he also got her paid because she was one of the lowest paid performers when she started out. And then he increased her salary until she was getting paid comparable to other acts and headlining her own shows, which in those days, the girl singer in big bands sang two to three songs tops in a show. So he got her to the point of singing six to seven songs, which was a lot of songs for, for a female singer, and then headlining her own shows being billed equally with other artists. He also um, billed her with, uh, since Billie Holiday and Louis Armstrong uh, were so successful, and Louis Armstrong was so successful, Joe Glazer billed her, put her on shows with all the other trumpet players that he booked, uh, Roy Eldridge, Hot Lips Page, uh, Henry Red Allen, you know. So it was a marketing tool as well. Um, so now I want to uh, play you two tracks that I hope illustrate the influence that Louis Armstrong had on Billie Holiday. The singing styles are more similar than you would think, even though Louis sang kind of more in the pocket and Billie Holiday's phrasing was really more stretched over the bar lines, which gave it a more relaxed, uh, kind of relaxed, sensual feel, but still in her own pocket, very much um, deliberate. So the first uh, track, and this is going to be track three on that CD, is going to be uh, Louis Armstrong uh, in Chicago 1931, Them Their Eyes. <laughs> And he doesn't sing for, for a while, so he does one chorus toward the end. Listen to the phrasing.
Okay, so now I want to play Billie Holiday and her orchestra, Them Their Eyes, from 1939, and this will be track four. <laughs> Yeah. So you can see how Billie Holiday was influenced by Pop's phrasing. I mean, I can, I can hear sparkle, bubble, you know, so they're very free with a melody, but it's great, you know? So if you want the melody, you'll, you'll, you'll go and research the melody, get the sheet music and see what the actual melody is. But I don't care because it's, you know, usually I'm a real stickler for what's the melody, you know, how, what, what is that, what, is, what did the writer write? I can listen to the two of them forever and it's it's fine. Whatever. I'm like I I didn't know you could do that with with that. You know what I'm saying? And so you get their personal uh interpretations. Now we are going to um go to a few clips from the 1947. I wish I could do this chronologically, but it's I I wasn't possible. So um the 1947 film New Orleans and um, in which uh, Billie Holiday plays Andy, who is a singing maid. And the gist of the movie is a, the rich uh, ingenue uh, falls in love with the uh, casino owner, and the ingenue's mother uh, wants her to be a classical singing sensation. But the ingenue uh, falls in love with jazz in the meantime, to the horror of, of her mother. So then what happens is, uh, I'm trying to make this short, so what happens is the, her mother uh, pays one of like the city council people to, and it's not clear what his role is, but he uh, is gonna build an opera house. You know, this is, this is taking place in New Orleans. So he's gonna build an opera house. So she kind of says, well, I'll give you the money to build an opera house if you shut Storyville down. 
So this, so, so this is what happens. So then he moves his operations to, uh, to Chicago, right? Yeah, he moves his operations from New Orleans to Chicago, takes Louis Armstrong's whole, now Louis Armstrong is the film. Without his, orca his band in this film, you wouldn't really have a film. So, um, and his name is prominently displayed everywhere. You know it's Louis, you know it's Satchmo, and he is the love interest of Billie Holiday. And their chemistry is sweet. It's really nice on film. And she also looks great on film, you know, so the two of them, you know, it, it just just a wonderful thing. So then what happens, he moves his operation to Chicago, and then um, her, the, ingenue's, the ingenue's mother realizes uh, that, okay, we can put jazz in the concert hall. And they had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, blowback about that, that people didn't want jazz in the concert hall. So uh, Louis Armstrong is in the film until the end when Woody Herman's band is the, is the actual band that gets to play in the concert hall. So that's, there you have it. Okay, so we, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so we will start with um, N.D., the first scene, Andy uh, playing Do You Know What It Means to Miss New Orleans and singing, and the ingenue just getting smitten with, oh, what kind of music is that? Okay, so we'll roll that. Oh, I had such a time getting Wait, who's that, Mother? That's Endy, your maid, and I've asked her not to sing those songs in this house. But she sings like an angel. Well, there's more devil than angel in that music. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans when that's where you left your heart? Andy, didn't I tell you not to let me catch you at that piano again? I'm sorry, ma'am. If I'd have heard you coming, I wouldn't have let you catch me. Well, Andy, you're incorrigible. This is Miss Merrily. Hello, Andy. Welcome to New Orleans, Miss Merrily. Oh, thank you. Oh, let me fix you a good hot tub. And it will melt away all your tiredness. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll send you up some nice hot tea, darling. Welcome home. <laughs> Come on, Miss Amelia. Indy? Yes, ma'am? That music you were playing, what was it? I just can't seem to remember not to play it, Miss Merrily. It was a kind of little old blues tune. Blues? Do you play the blues only when you're blue? No, ma'am. They just call it blues. We play it when we're blue or when we're happy, even when we're in love. Right now, I'm in the latter. <sighs> Are you really, Indy? Yes, ma'am. There's no one in the world like my Satchmo. Satchmo? That's short for Satchmo. His real name is Louis, but I like Satchmo best. How does the end of that song go? Miss Merrily, are you trying to put ideas into my head? Please do. Uh, but softly. And there's something more. I miss the one I care for. More than I miss New Orleans. Yeah, what a voice. I, I agree. And um, so this now is... Um, when they are, when Storyville is just about to be shut down, I believe that this is the next segment. We'll see. What do you think I'm here for? <laughs> Where is he, boy? No! 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 Oh, not yet. Ingenue's still s smitten with jazz. This is the f she, she's at the club. Do you know what it means? To miss New Orleans and miss it each night and day. I know I'm not wrong. The feeling's getting stronger the longer I stay away. Miss the moss covered vines, the tall sugar pines where mockingbirds used to sing. And I'd like to see the lazy Mississippi 
This is the scene. Make up some words to Yeah, yeah, come on. Where yeah, they're about to shut down Storyville. About goodbye to Storyville. You get the idea, Gail. I'm long, Gail. Shout some words to you. I'm long. You can do it, and then make it a good one. That's right, Andy. That's Sing right. it. All you old time queens from New Orleans who live in Storyville. That's us. You sang the blues. Tried to amuse. Here's how they pay the bill. Yes, hell yeah. Yeah, that's right. The law stepped in and called it sin to have a little fun. The police car has made us stop, and story bill is done. Pick out your steamboat, pick yourself a train, a slow old train. Pick out your steamboat, pick yourself a train, a slow old train. They made you close up, they'll never let you back. Won't let you back Go buy your ticket Or else you walk the track No use complaining Blue skies fall rain The cold old rain No use complaining That's the uh, casino owner Just say farewell now and get your one last thrill. Your one last thrill. Just say farewell now. Farewell to Storyville. No use complaining. Catch up 
with you later. Don't leave him. We'll never find each other. So, all right. So then this last uh, clip is uh, actually, we don't know what happened with our uh, characters, Endy, and we don't know what... We don't know what happened, but she reappears. Uh, you know, he's Louis Armstrong's character keeps asking, you know, have you have you heard of, from Andy? Did you did she write me letters? Did she write me? You know, where is she? And then she miraculously appears in this last clip with his orchestra in Chicago singing the blues of Bruin. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that is the gorgeous Billie Holiday, and I'm sure the director of the picture didn't tell her to look at Lewis. She was doing that quite on her own. Um, so do we have time for the, for the last clip where he introduces the band? How long is that? Okay, so we're going to, uh, there's another clip that's in the, in the picture. Billie doesn't sing in this one, but it's Lewis introducing all the great musicians in the band. So I just want to play that clip. Yeah, that music blew just the thing that you like to strut to on the floor. Yeah, the slide trombone and the trumpet moan as you're coming through the door. I'll guarantee that you'll never see like the likes of them again. Mm, stomp your feet to the beat of my Dixie music men. Everybody move, get right in the groove. There ain't nothing you can lose. <laughs> now right here's the spot where we'll all get hot with a nasty mess of blues. Here's the place to slap and spank that bass. Hear the music, and I mean, this is where the blues is born in New Orleans. Let me introduce Mr. Charlie Beale, piano man. Can he spiel? Only got two hands, but that's a plenty. But when he plays, it sounds like 20. And here's Kid Ori on the horn. The greatest slide man ever born. Plays trombone smears with laughing notes. No human being ever wrote. Everybody knows Zooty Singleton can beat them sheepskins like no one. Cymbals, bells, and all that stuff. I give out the face and treat them rough. And then here's Bonnie Bigger. 
Ah, oh, that's clarinet. You ain't never heard nothing like him yet. When he cuts loose, I know you'll roar. Mr. Big Eyes, please give me more. Now here's Bud Scott and his old guitar. Always smoking that big cigar. He's the rhythm man of a great renown. Give a listen while he goes to town. Red Calendar, meet him face to face. He's the one that plays that old slap bass. He started out with a violin, and the doggone thing just grew up on him. And there's me, excuse my crust, introduce myself, my must. I'm Satchmo Armstrong, don't forget. I got to get up out on the old corner. man and he's mighty slick he's the boss man of this place and how mr nick please stand up and take a bow why they almost make their instruments talk where does such music come from well it came from miss smith you're going home not until you tell me oh, well it comes from work song cold coast of west africa Little Christian churches, river boats. You want? Okay, that's it. Yes. Yes. And that was um. Our, uh, let me see, uh, De, De Cordova. I'm trying to think of his first name. He was a Mexican actor, and did about a hundred films, uh, in Spanish. So I'm going to finish up. Uh, my presentation with the only session that uh, Louis Armstrong and Billie Holiday did together on DECA, uh, September 30th, 1949, under the direction of Cy Oliver and his orchestra. Uh, the first one is My Sweet Hunk of Trash, and uh, the second duet is You Can't Lose a Broken Heart. So this is tracks one and two. And again, they had the blues in common, so this was easy for them. You don't add up too much. Ain't got that glamour touch. You're trifling lazy. Ain't worth a cigarette ash. Look out there, Mama. Look out there. You carry me too fast. Watch it, baby. You're just my good for nothing. My sweet hunk of trash. My, my, how you sound. You're very short on looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dumb when it comes to books. Look out, baby, watch it, honey. And you stay full of corn, just like suck a trash. Well, what you want me to do in my idle moments? You're just a good for nothing but my sweet hunk of trash. Let me get a word in there, honey. You run in your mouth. You said I've worried you for years. I'm just a ball fly mooching beers. While you sweat over a hot stove, slinging heads. Work my fingers right down to the elbows. Yes, I may be good for nothing, but I'm still your sweet Uncle Trash. Forced admit it, baby. You said I spread my love all around, and with the chicks all over town. But how can I when you keep me broke, so I can't spend no cash? Yes, I may be good for nothing, but I'm still your sweet Uncle Trash. Listen here, Pops. You know you lie a 
about your use? I don't lie, baby. I'm just careless with the truth, that's How all. How careless can you be? I don't know. With all young chicks, you try to make a flash. No, baby, it ain't like that, no. But you're still my good for nothing, my sweet hunk of trash. <laughs> Now when you stay out very late It sure makes me mad to wait I'll come, baby Cause you come home too tired To raise just one eyelash Yeah, 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 why did baby why? You're just good for nothing But you're my sweet hunk of trash Yes, indeed You don't, you don't hear singing like that these days. You just don't hear that. You can't lose a broken heart. Don't lose your head, then lose your guy. You can't lose a broken heart. If you ever break up, then try to make up it's tough to make a brand new start take a walk think it over while strolling neath the moon don't say things in december you regret in june Weigh your remarks before you speak, or you may be sorry soon. Don't be erratic, be diplomatic to keep your hearts in tune. Cruel, harsh words often spoken will upset your apple cart. So don't lose your head, then lose your guy, cause you can't lose a broken heart. Look out, don't lose your head, then lose your gal, you can't lose a broken heart, then if you ever break up, then try to make up. It's tough to make a brand new start. Take a walk and think it over while strolling beneath the moon. Don't say things in December. Mm, baby, you regret them too soon. Wear your remarks before you speak. You may be sorry soon, then don't be erratic, be diplomatic to keep your hearts in tune. Then harsh words often spoken will upset your apple cart, then so don't lose your head. And lose your girl Cause you can't lose a broken heart But ba po po zen zen No, you can't no. Can't lose a broken heart Words to live by <laughs> I want to thank Paul Kahn For being my visual tech person today, and thank Andy for all of his help, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Catherine Russell, y'all. <laughs> One more time. Um, we're going to take about five, you need about you know, a minute or so to, to shift to Paul here, who's going to be talking about 
um, Louis Armstrong's vaudeville and minstrel roots, of which there are many. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, so take about five, come on back. Um, I also want to point out that when you're watching the New Orleans movie, um, Barney Begard, the clarinet player, uh, it is quite pot. We have one of his clarinets on display downstairs on the second floor, kind of off the Herman Leonard exhibit. That might be that clarinet. I'm not yeah. exactly sure, but it might be the clarinet he was playing right there. So, anyway, come back at about five and uh, we'll keep going. Thank you for coming. Hello, this is Ashlyn Parker from the Trumpet Mafia. Welcome to the 18th annual Satchmo Summerfest presented by Chevron and the Satchmo Legacy Stage. This event is produced by French Quarter Festivals Incorporated.